In an effort to combat major depressive disorder, several new therapies have been developed over the last decades. One promising method is the application of transcranial magnetic stimulation, or in short, TMS. TMS therapy for depression was first FDA approved in the US in 2008, based on an elaborate study by O'Riordan and colleagues from 2007. In a previous video, we discussed the findings of that study, as well as the basics of TMS, how it can affect brain activity and what potential side effects are. In this video, we want to move on and discuss a second study, published by Lefkowitz and colleagues, that led to the second FDA-approved TMS protocol for the treatment of depression. Since we discussed the basics of TMS and side effects in our previous video, we won't repeat them here. So please, check out our first video if you are interested in that information. Before we begin, I would like to point out that if you feel troubled about your mental health status, we encourage you to seek contact with a mental health specialist. This video is meant to inform you about the studies that showed the efficacy of TMS in treating depression. However, this video does not intend to persuade you in favor of TMS or opposing TMS as a treatment method for depression. The study published by Lefkowitz and colleagues in 2015 describes a multi-center randomized control trial performed in the US, Israel, Germany and Canada. The final analysis included 181 patients with major depressive disorder. Of these patients, 89 received active TMS therapy, whereas 92 received a placebo TMS, a so-called sham TMS. It should be pointed out that all participants were treatment resistant, meaning that they had at least one prior antidepressant therapy that had failed. Also, none of the patients was on antidepressant medication during this experimental trial. In this study, deep TMS was used, which is different from previous studies. For this, a so-called H1 coil was used, introduced by Brainsway. The H1 coil is specifically designed to target deeper structures in the brain compared to a conventional figure of 8 coil. Typically, H1 coils are positioned in a helmet that has a cooling system in it. The target location for stimulation was similar to previous studies, namely the left dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. Also similar to previous studies, a high-frequency stimulation paradigm was used. The goal was to increase activation of the left prefrontal cortex, which would reduce imbalances between left and right hemispheres, and thereby improve depressive symptoms. The specific high-frequency paradigm included 2 seconds of stimulation with 20 seconds of rest. In each 2 second stimulation train, 36 pulses were applied. And this was repeated 55 times, resulting in a total of 1980 pulses. Thus, deep TMS was applied for approximately 20 minutes. This procedure was repeated 5 times per week for 4 weeks. And after those 4 weeks, there were additional maintenance sessions. Specifically, 2 sessions per week for 12 weeks. Participants who received the placebo treatment went through the same procedure, however, they never received actual stimulation. Treatment responses on depression symptoms were assessed by the Hamilton Depression Rating Scale, one week after the initial 4 weeks of treatment and at the end of the maintenance treatment, after 16 weeks. The main outcome measures were response and remission rates. A response rate is defined as a reduction in symptoms compared to baseline of at least 50%. Remission rates relate to a total score below a certain value, at which a patient is no longer identified as clinically depressed. So let us take a look at the results. After the initial 4 week treatment, response rates were about 38% and remission rates were about 33%. This was significantly higher compared to the placebo group, where response and remission rates were at 21 and 15% respectively. After the additional maintenance treatment for 12 weeks, response and remission rates were at 44 and 32%, which again was significantly higher than placebo TMS, where response and remission rates were at 25 and 22%. The most common observed side effect was a headache after the session, which was reported by 26.7% of participants in the active TMS group. 
other side effects were relatively rare. So what can we conclude from this study? Deep TMS was effective in approximately 4 out of 10 people, and remission rates were observed in approximately 3 out of 10 people. It should however be kept in mind that this study was performed on treatment-resistant patients. This suggests when including a more general population, response and remission rates are expected to be higher. Indeed, Harvey and colleagues in 2020 performed an analysis on deep TMS clinical applications since 2013. In a total sample size of 1040 patients, response rates were at 48% when 30 sessions of TMS were applied. Furthermore, since 2013, TMS protocols have been introduced that show even more promising results. For instance, Blumberger and colleagues applied so-called theta burst stimulation and found promising results, which has led to yet another FDA-approved protocol in 2018. More recently, in 2021, at Stanford University, the Stanford Accelerated Intelligent Neuromodulation Therapy, or SAINT protocol, was introduced. Response rates of up to 80% were reported. However, due to the small sample size of that study, this protocol is not FDA approved yet. But collection of large sample sizes are currently ongoing. Besides new protocols, also optimization of location of stimulation and individualizing treatments to each and every one's unique brain activity pattern will likely increase the effects in the future. So all in all, there is still a lot to gain and more research is needed, but we are on a good way. In future videos, we will cover other FDA-approved TMS protocols in more detail, and how the field has improved since. We hope you found this information useful, and we hope to see you the next time.